We are here at the 65th annual convention of Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers, and I have with me Ganesh Mani, who is the CEO at Switch Mobility. Uh, Ganesh, thanks for sparing your time. Uh, tell us, in terms of this uh, progression of the electric mobility mega trend, uh, in the bus segment, which is where you play with your focus area, yes, you have a focus on the small truck segment as well, but uh, buses is a bigger play for you as of now. So how is it progressing and uh, and uh, no, what are the new initiatives that you, know, you are uh, no, in uh, kind of taking up next to tap the so, trend? So, thanks very much, Sanjay. So the point is, uh, first and foremost, we are equal now. And we tend to grow in both the directions put, put together, whether it's uh, LCV segment or for the matter bus segment also. So bus segment is obviously with a, uh, with a great drive, uh, like uh, PME drive. I'm 100% sure that there will be a lot of focus coming, coming forward also. Uh, so, we have already got, uh, you know, sold more than 1500 buses on the road and we like to, we have uh, order books of 1500 plus, plus all those areas and also a lot of things in pipeline. So, our focus on buses is going to grow up and with the new special impetus on uh, PME drive, I'm sure the, the, the numbers will go in multiple folds uh, going forward. You know, the uh, upgradation of pub, uh, no, uh, public transport is very, very crucial considering that we are increasingly facing the congestion problem in, in, in metros and uh, electric mobility, of course, with its inherent advantages, has a role to play. But in terms of uh, policy interventions, uh, we had recently seen uh, the GST reforms. Uh, one may say it's a case of no news is good news for the electric mobility industry players. But uh, tell me, I mean, overall, directly, indirectly, uh, what kind of impact, uh, no? not directly, but indirectly, possibly, this GST reforms could have on the commercial, electric commercial vehicle industry. That's right. So from a standpoint of uh, LCVs only, we can speak about it because buses are kind of an upcoming industry as far as the private is, you know, the private players are concerned. It's predominantly run by, you know, government orders perspective. So in terms of ELCVs, it's, it, you know, we have spoken to a lot of customers. They have always been bio and the kind of a segment what we are in is the is one which has been driven through the actual remand and also sustainable goals of multiple organizations and also in terms of TCOs. So these TCO plays will play a very important role with the kind of a data which we have in this electric vehicle, which is a big advantage. We are trying to have a multi-pronged approach to really make TCO justifiable to the people. So to that extent, uh, this is going to play a very important role. And uh, when the, you know, when the GST comes down so with the best advantages, the country is going to grow. The numbers of actual movement is going to grow. White goods, for example. And that's what, you know, the entire industry of ELCVs, right, is all about. So as the GDP grows up, I'm sure I think the kind of adoption of EV also would definitely go up. And recently we saw an article about, uh, you know, 200, you know, 2 million um, EV products in the calendar, calendar year, which is likely to touch. Though the CV plays a very lesser role in this, but the more infra is always better for you know, EV as a whole industry is concerned. So I believe strongly that with the, with the introduction of all these betterment of these GST uh, slabs, I think the GDP would grow, GDP would grow means obviously the sustainable, you know, efforts of the country also will grow. And that's what we believe uh, is going to happen. And talking about sustainability and particularly sustainable mobility, double deckers uh, have a key uh, role to play because of the same footprint you carry you know, on an average more, more, more people, commuters. Uh, you started off with Mumbai, and I understand that over the past couple of years, you have had discussions with authorities in other cities also. Any progression on that side, uh, on that front? Yeah, so being a pioneer, all our products are always a path-breaking uh, products and double-decker. Whether it is 1970s, while Ashok Leyland has introduced the uh, first double-decker in Wayback, in diesel. Now, we were the first one to bring double-decker in India as well. So, there have been a lot of, you know, interesting things in uh, uh, people have been really happy in uh, using in Mumbai. We recently acquired an orders from Ahmedabad Municipal uh, Corporation and a whole lot of other things also in pipeline. People are actually using this and seeing these opportunities going forward. I'm sure, as you rightly said, I think since the product is good and the people are also liking it, I think a whole lot of opportunities are there to take it across. Recently, Honorable uh, CM of uh, Andhra Pradesh has also opened a uh, hip-hop buses in Vizag uh, to begin with. So these are all the new areas wherein you That's know, we can always say double decker, which is a uh, you know open type of the uh, new adventure, no, new areas of uh, explo, exp, you know, exposure we're trying to work out. So I'm sure I think uh, going forward we see a lot and lot of you know more tractions coming across in cities, 
wherein really a tourism places can be a good advantages and uh, a lot of people are approaching us and we are also trying to give them as a demo vehicles to see that how this product can be launched in a bigger way. Okay. And lastly, Ganesh, two things. Uh, one is in terms of your production uh, facility. You are currently sharing the res production resources uh, facilities with Ashok Leland, parent company. And at, at one point you had uh, the plan of having footprint at Spain, which kind of put it on hold. So on, on both these two fronts, uh, are you okay in terms of the domestic capacity and the shared capacity or do you think now you're, you'll have to move out to your uh, uh, a dedicated facility and on the overseas front, uh, are, you, are you kind of re-looking at that? So uh, first and foremost, uh, our Lucknow plant, which is going to be a state-of-the-art technology plant, which is going to be coming in a few months of time, we have already made sure that it is a completely a model agnostic line. So you can make it any kind of products, any kind of variability. So that's what is going to be a, you know, the world-class products are going to come out from there. So that should be able to sustain the actual needs of us. And as you know that we are able to reduce the time to, you know, start up a new plant and quickly launch these products. That's what we have actually, you know, expertise it now. So as and when the requirements are coming across the globe, I think we'll be able to take decisions on how to really expand this in multiple areas. I think uh, we'll just wait and watch in terms of how the market ex expands. But having said that, our vehicles of, um, you know, products in Spain is already there. We're already in the trial runs right now. Yeah, that's already been in place. And uh, we, we would like to try, you know, take this across into most important models like Middle East, Africa and all the other places also, all of our EV products going forward. And as and when it is required, so we got, as you know that in India, uh, we got around eight facilities. Overseas, we got more than 15 facilities across. So I think we have a lot of opportunities for us to really expand and uh, tap it as as, it's, uh, as and when it is required. In the Middle East and the African markets, when do you plan to you know, have an entry there? We, we wanted to have our, we got a very clear cut part on that, a lot of trials, we have to do it. And our pipelines are absolutely getting ready for these activities as well. On that note, Ganesh, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.